Welcome to the tour of it on Twine. In this video, I'm going to review how to do text input in Harlow 3.3 using macros. So sometimes we get ourselves into situations where we want to get some type of text input from a user or player. We want a name or perhaps some other thing like a password from them. And then we want to do something with that data. There are two different key macros we can use within Harlow depending on what data we want to get that information. So let's start example one, we'll run through the examples, and then I'll talk about a common problem that can occur when we use these macros. So pulling up example one, we see the use of the input macro, and then notice in quotations we have name. So this says the following is a single line input with the default value of name. The input macro will allow users or players, depending on what your audience is, to input a single line. That is, once they press enter, it won't do anything. So we need to enter up to a single line and then it will stop. So we can't enter multiple lines of text, but we can enter a single line. So let's go ahead and play example one just so we can see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and build and play. And the following is a single line with a default value of name. Now notice it says name. Name was what was in quotation marks. So we can give this input right here, text input, a default value. We can also input text in it. And my text is input. Now notice, at least as of this current example, we're not doing anything with this input. So that will push us to the next couple of examples. So we can use the input macro to get up to a single line of text if you want to think about it as kind of a sentence or a single line. So if I press the return or enter key, nothing really happens. So we can only go up to a single line. So let's move on to the next example. So we can get up to a single line, but what if we want to do something with that input? Well, here is where a special use of a new keyword within Harlow is used, and it's called bind. The bind keyword connects a macro with a variable. It binds to that variable. So whatever value is put within that usage is then bound to that particular variable. So the use of the bind keyword is unique within Harlow because it allows us to bypass the use of the set macro. So in previous examples we may have seen or previous experiences you may have seen with Harlow, we usually use the set macro to create a variable and then use it in some way. When we use the bind keyword, we do not need to create it ahead of time. Harlow will create it if it does not already exist. So in this case right here, notice I'm not creating this variable ahead of time. I'm using the bind keyword right here, input, bind, space, and then the variable I want. I'm going to be bound to it. So whatever value is input will then be set in name. So notice, for example, too, we move over to the passage C name, and we can see C name, you entered name. So we can immediately do something with the data by binding to it. So let's go ahead and shift the start of the story over to example two and play from this point. So we can bind to a variable. So if I entered something, say Dan, and I click C name, I would get Dan. And that's extremely useful for many types of examples we may want to use. So let's go ahead and move to example three and example four, and then we'll, we will circle back to example two. So often, we don't want a single line. We may want multiple lines. There might be some use cases where we want the user to enter some information about themselves, a backstory for their character, or any number of other things. For that, we're using a slightly different macro. So instead of using input, we're using input hyphen box. So the difference between input and input box is that input box allows multiple lines of input. So we can press the enter or return key and enter multiple things. So let's go ahead and shift the story start over to example three and then look at this. So if we build play. If we want multiple lines, we use a different macro. Notice the presentation is very different. Notice this time, lots of space. I can press the enter or return key, depending on your keyboard, and enter multiple lines. And then I can then see 
those multiple lines. You entered this time lots of space. So notice the space between lines, what are sometimes called new line characters or return spaces, are shown to us. Literally what we entered is shown back to us. Now, let's finally move over to example four and then we will revisit example two and three as I mentioned. So as we saw using example two, we can get a single line of input using input. Example three, we can get multiple lines with input box. Now, there is a slight problem, a sort of caveat we need to be made aware of when we use these two particular macros. So there is no security checking in Harlow. Whatever we enter, if we're not careful, will then be shown or otherwise become part of the story. So let's return to example two for just a second and let me show you how this can become a problem. So back here in example two, let's go ahead and start from this point. And it asks us to enter a name. Now, perhaps I am an absent-minded player, or I am a malicious player, or any number of other things, and I'm not really paying attention. And I accidentally enter something like this, where I've entered an asterisk on either side of my name, Dan. And now let's click see name. Oh, look at this. It's now italicized or has emphasis. That's not exactly what I inputted. That's the result of the text presentation being translated by Harlow. This can become potentially very, very dangerous because potentially something as benign as this could turn into something very malicious. I could perhaps enter a complex set of macro instructions to do things like erase a game save or anything else. Now, it doesn't really affect the computer or anything outside the web browser, but it would affect potentially the story and could mess with very story things. So in which case, let's move over to example four and kind of keep this in mind. So for example four reminds us we need to be very careful of user input. We should check the values against something. So instead of immediately showing them, we should verify that we have exactly what we want and then do something with it. So in often, what we will find is users entering things like usernames, passwords, or other things we want from a user, and then we check it against something. We don't immediately show it to them. For example, you may log into a computer or other things like that, and it will then check your password against it. So in this case, for example, for I'm asking for a username. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to check username before we play this. So I'm setting up two examples of the if macro. In the first, I'm saying welcome if the username is Dan in lowercase, but if it is not Dan, I'm going to say, hey, you did not enter the correct username, and then point them back to try again, sending them back to example four. So in this case, we're keeping that in mind. We can get input using input or input box, but again, we need to be very careful with it. In most cases, users won't be malicious, but they might be absent-minded or include some other characters or symbols and have special meaning to Harlow. So generally, as example four shows, we need to check it against something, especially if we're doing things like usernames or passwords or other common inputs. We generally want to check it using the if macro instead of accepting it as is. Now, there are some more advanced topics I will revisit in a future video that we can do even more kind of debugging and checking, but for now, just keeping in mind, if we're using input or input box, which are very powerful and could be potentially very useful, we just need to kind of keep the little caveat in mind that Harlow does not do any checking against it. There's no security checks or other things. Whatever the person enters will be sent directly into that variable. We will bind or be bound to that variable and it will have that value. So generally, again, as example four points out, we need to check the username, check the password, or check for some other things. And as we will revisit in a later, more complex topic video, there are much more, are much more advanced checks we can do against this, other than just checking if the person entered the exact thing we wanted. But as we're learning this topic, this is a great foundation, again, allowing us to use input or input box within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.